World leaders have accused Donald Trump of using the House of International Diplomacy to incite war and destruction. In his maiden speech to the United Nations General Assembly, the US president threatened to totally destroy North Korea, mocking its leader Kim Jong-un as a rocket man. North America correspondent Connor Duffy reports from New York. At a morning market in the capital, Naypyidaw, the price of vegetables is a much bigger topic than Aung San Suu Kyi's controversial speech about Rakhine State. Many here didn't tune in because it was in English. But amongst those who did, the response was positive. I expected Mother Sue to solve the problem in Rakhine State ever since she came to power, but she's been silent on it. Now I am so glad of her speech. I'm so sad about the people in Rakhine State. I don't want to see such casualties because we're all brothers and sisters. I stand with her in calling for the international community to learn about the origins of the problem. Internationally, the reaction hasn't been so positive, with human rights groups describing the speech as a mix of untruths and victim blaming, saying Aung San Suu Kyi has been silent on the role of the armed forces. Her vow to welcome back refugees as long as they can be verified has also been met with scepticism. Most Rohingyas were stripped of their identification documents years ago. The number of refugees making the arduous journey across the border into monsoon-drenched camps continues to grow. The UN estimates 20,000 Rohingyas are entering Bangladesh daily. Half of them are children. Conditions are increasingly dire, with no adequate shelter or safe drinking water and a shortage of food. When we arrived, we started to make our home and it was floating in floodwaters. That is why we have not got any food or any sleep. The international community is continuing to appeal to Aung San Suu Kyi to use her influence to put an end to this crisis. The authorities in Myanmar must end the military operations and recognize the right of refugees to return in safety and dignity. And they must also address the grievances of the Rohingya, whose status has been left unresolved for far too long. This refugee says his village was burnt down by the military, but despite the persecution, he still wants to return home. If they didn't shoot us in Myanmar and there was peace, we would go back right away. But returning to Myanmar looks unlikely for now. Liam Cochran, ABC News, Naypyidaw.